All right, so we're discussing the uh, Change of Tenancy Act, which comes in force on the October 1st. Here with Aaron Saliba from our property management department, we discussed pets in our first one. Um, and now we're going to talk about domestic violence, which is a very sensitive, ugly subject. Before we do, just quickly on assistance animals, they're not classified as pets, are they? No, they're not. So <laughs> explain that to me how it works. Someone's got an assistance animal, be it for whatever reason, that just you cannot say no to them. No, no. Okay. And if that assistance animal, whatever sort, creates damage to the property, mm -hmm. Who is responsible to fix that damage? Uh, it's gonna, unfortunately, it's going to be the landlords. Okay, and there's nothing. There's no. There's no, there's no grey area here. Just no. that's the way it is. So, and when tenants go through domestic violence, um, they've got to apply and go through those. They've got to tick all those boxes. Well, provide all the evidence that. They so are. this is hang on. This is the assistance pets we're talking about. Oh, so pets? yeah, yeah. yeah. But that, that applies for the domestic violence thing too. So any damage caused by a domestic violence situation has to be fixed by the landlord. Yeah, and that's that's why it's going to be so important for the landlords to get um, landlord insurance as well. So just, just before we go to that, I want to talk about what the tenant has to prove and what do they have to go to the police and there has to be charges and all, like they have to be be able to um, support their claims. Yeah, so they'll, they'll need all the evidence uh, to prove that they are going through that domestic violence, um, provide all that information to the RTA and they've got to fill out, I believe it's a Form 20, um, they've got to complete, and then that, that will be provided to us as a domestic violence. Okay, so we've established that it is a domestic violence situation. The landlord has to fix whatever damage is done, and without decent insurance, he's got to pay it out of his own pocket. That's right. That's why it's so important for those people that do have landlord insurance, just to make sure that uh, check your policies, um, because you know all those there's real estate companies uh, that do landlord insurance, like EBMs, Terry shares. Um, and then all the banks that do insurance as well. So just so important to make sure you've got the right policy to make sure you cover it. So who do we recommend here? Uh, we would recommend EBM. EBM. Uh, or you can use Terry Shearer as well. And both of those definitely cover situations like that? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so if you're a, a landlord out there and uh, you're not sure whether your insurance covers it, like it's going to be worthwhile checking, and also check with your um, actual property agent if we don't look after it for you. Are they across all these changes? Do they know what's going to go on? Or if you're a self-managed person and the compliance issue is just beginning too hard, that's what these guys get paid for. So thanks for your time. See you soon.